Hey, 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 it's Adele from Let's Get Inky and oh boy, we have started this video supersonic speeding because I'm just doing some gesso and that's the most boring part of this video. So we're speeding through this part. Uh, today I'm doing some art journaling in my 8x8 creative uh, dilutions journal, dilutions creative journal, sorry. And I have a love-hate relationship with this journal, particularly the colour of the pages. They're a little bit creamier than I would like. Uh, but I put down a coat, a very poor coat of gesso because as you saw at the very start, start in the super speedy section, I have, I'm out of gesso and so I had to chop my bottle up and scrape out every last little bit. But surprisingly, you can save a lot of product. So if you ever get to the bottom of a um, paint tube or, a, you know, a, a medium, chop it open and see what you can get because I've made things stretch for a couple of pages um, by doing that and yeah you get every this gesso is expensive <laughs> you use every last drop you can I did just buy uh, some new gesso and they've stopped selling it in the ginormous boxes uh, the bottles that I usually buy so I think I paid about 45 or 50 dollars for 400 and something mils um, so yeah, use every last drop you can. So what I have done here is today it's scrap stash sat day on a Sunday, technically when I'm uploading this video in Australia time, but I have had these little hearts lying on my desk, um, for a little bit. I recently filmed a triple process video over on uh, Patreon showing how I use these paper hearts in different ways on different um, art journal pages and I still had some left over it's always the way whenever I punch shapes I swear they multiply and punch themselves sometimes because I, I don't mean to punch that many but I just I punch too many and I've always got some left over so I've been using them on layouts sporadically and I thought today uh, they would add a really nice bit of texture to the background now technically I didn't have to do gesso on this page because I'm adding acrylic paint and um, it doesn't soak into the page uh, like some other water-based products like watercolor or even the acrylic inks soak into the page a little bit more because they're liquidy uh, so I didn't need to do that gesso in the end but I didn't know what I was doing on this page I never really know when I when I get started I just knew I wanted to do something bright and cheery on this day the day that I filmed this it was pouring outside and which is why everything looks a little bit shadowy because I've got my lights on full floor but um, it still is very very dark and gloomy outside so I thought a nice sunshiny yellow page would you know brighten things up a little bit so I've got the hearts there and if you wanted to cover them up you could um, do a coat of gesso over the top of them and then the yellow paint so that you didn't see the patterns but I really liked the, the little bits of pattern poking through. And then I've got this stencil, I think it's a Vicky Booten stencil and some white gesso or white paint. I think I'm using white paint actually. I usually use gesso, um, but I got none. Uh, and then I've got this stencil, which I recently just got from Kmart. There was a, a three pack of stencils in their crafty section and I don't really have any mandala-y style um, stencils so I thought for I think it was only about four or five dollars for the three of them so I thought why not now today we're doing something a bit different mm, all of these squiggly lines are a bit out of my comfort zone uh, but I filmed an art journal video a while ago and I wrote I did a border around the focal image with um, a large like a large strip of paint pen and then I wrote on top of the border and I really love the way it looked. So I wanted to try and replicate that vibe here and it would be much easier with a, a thicker paint pen, much, much easier. But instead I am coloring in all of these little lines. You could also just do it with paint, um, but I have a, a love relationship with Posca paint pens and I love any excuse in order to use them. Um, definitely not sponsored I, 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 in my dreams but um, I've been using them for years and they are my favorite paint pen I just feel like they they do the job really well 
um, and they come in lots of pretty colours. So this became, this was a little bit streaky because I was going over the top of the paint and my yellow acrylic paint is a little bit cluggy. Uh, it's not, yeah, it's not in top shape. A lot of my acrylic paints have gone um, a little bit dry and a little bit, that just the consistency's changed after the heat of um, summer. And so I'm trying to use them as much as I can to, you know, get them in my books because I don't think they're going to last past this year. I think I'm going to have to throw a few of them out. I've tried lots of, you know, adding water, adding all sorts of things to them. And I think the, the heat um, that we had has just affected the, the actual makeup of the, the paint itself. So I've got all my squiggly lines. I ended up doing two, in some spots, three coats of the paint pen. And then I've got this lass looking over her shoulder and I don't know what she's thinking, but I like to find quotes that, you know, reflect how these people could be thinking. Does anyone else like people watching? This is, we're tangenting for a moment here, but Archie is such a fan of just observing people, usually in a very not subtle way. So if we go to the shops, he loves to just sit down and stare intently at people and just kind of like figure them out like he'll often tilt his head to the side and just it's just trying to figure out what their deal is and I feel like art journaling is a subtle way to people watch because I like to pretend what these magazine image people are thinking and uh, you know find a quote that maybe reflects how they're feeling in their facial expressions or in their um, you know their body language and it's like the the, the much more subtle version to um to make up a story about people and and what they're what's going on in their heads <laughs> have to teach Archie one day how to how to let out his people watching um wants them to an art journal page instead uh so now I'm adding some washi um after that creepy tangent and I swear I'm not a creep uh now I'm adding some washi and I do not trust washi never have never will it's let me down too many times. So um, I always add when I remember, usually, usually add uh, a little bit of glue stick behind most of my washi tapes. There's a few brands that I buy in particular that definitely need the glue, uh, especially when you're going over the top of paint and things. Sometimes if you're going over the top of a photo on a, like a scrapbook layout, or an, or an art journal page, I find that they stick better to photos, but there's something about every other surface that washi tape just doesn't seem to always like. Now I've got this little acrylic piece. I have been doing quite a few Grab Fives and um, Scrap Stash Sat Day videos that I've been filming. And so my desk is littered with various little bits of embellishment. You can't see the crafter lanches that are hiding particularly to the left of the camera. But they're there, believe me, they're very much there. I think I did a peek over on Instagram of some recent craft lanches. Um, if you follow me over there on Inky Quill. And uh, yeah, so I, I like to keep it real. I'm definitely not a neat crafter, <laughs> definitely not. Um, but in my various little crafter lanches, there's lots of embellishments that I, I, I don't want to put away so I'm trying to use them up and that little uh, acetate sunshine I think was out of the sunny days crepe paper ephemera pack and acetate I do struggle with um, particularly with how to adhere it down but I just put a little bit of glue stick on the back of this one and it seems to have worked you can't see the adhesive uh, definitely don't use double-sided tape because you'll see it Usually if I'm using acetate on a scrapbook page, I'll just staple it. Um, but here I, I didn't want the staple to show through on the opposite, um, on the, the behind page of this art journal. So that was a no-go. And then just adding a few little sprinkly bits, um, a little pop of orange. I was going to add orange acrylic paint at the start, but changed my mind. And here's the finished page. It's something, you know, it's a little bit crazy. You can't read the quote completely clearly as you can on some of my other pages, but that's okay. It's all about the process and just having fun. So I challenge you to find a focal image 
and people watch them and create a quote or find a quote sorry that matches what you think's going on in their brain have a great week peeps don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and i'll see you all very soon bye